Hello guys and welcome back to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to do stenciling in Blender. Yes, that's correct. There's actually a feature in Blender that allows you to take any image you want. In this case, I'm going to be using a whale. Drag it around, you can rotate, you can scale it, and you can use it as a stencil when you're working with your texture painting. And that can allow you to do all sorts of really cool things. So quickly watch this tutorial, I'll go through it, I'll show you how to set it all up, it's very easy. We'll be using the monkey head as an example. And I really think you guys will love adding this to your workflow. So let's jump into it. I'm gonna select everything and I'm just gonna press delete. I'm gonna go shift A and I think a really good object to demonstrate with here is the Suzanne monkey head. So let's go to our mesh primitives and let's go and add in the Suzanne monkey head over here. You'll see it's called monkey. Now one of the cool things about this head, which you might not know, is that if you go over to your UV editing workspace, you can actually notice here with this active that it already comes pre UV unwrap, which is gonna make this tutorial a whole lot easier since I don't have to cover that. So let's go over back to our layout for now. And let's just quickly go and give this a subdivision surface modifier and make it a little bit smoother. And let's just right click and go shade smooth. So now we have a nice smooth surface here. So what we're gonna do, since we already noticed this UV unwrapped, is we're gonna go over to our materials tab down here. Let's just click on the new button here to add a material. Let's just call it monkey. You don't even have to name it. That's just what I prefer to do. And let's go over to our texture paint workspace here. Now by default, it's gonna be pink because we haven't added a texture. So let's quickly go up here. You're gonna see over here and decide we can create a new texture by clicking new. And you're gonna see over here, we have a width and a height. The PX here standing for pixel. Um, this is a little bit small for me. So I'm just gonna double this by um, typing in 2048 at the top. And I'm gonna make it the same at the bottom. I'm just gonna go 2048. And now it is double the resolution. And let's just go over here to the generate type and let's just make it UV grid. You can just leave it as a color or something, but that's what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna press okay. And over here it's generated this UV grid, but we're still not seeing it over here. So we just need to quickly go over to our shading workspace. And let's just quickly go to this principal shader and just click on this little yellow bit, the base color, drag it out and type an image and just select image texture and then just go to the drop down here and let's get that new texture, which in this case is called Untitled. Feel free to give it a name if you want. For now, I'm just gonna go back to the texture paint window here. And because you are in your texture paint mode here, you should be able to see the texture applied here as well, even if you are in your solid view. So what we're gonna do now is at this point, it's completely up to you. You can get whatever image you want, um, PNG, would work as well if you have a transparent background. So what I have here is, I'll just quickly show you, is this image over here, which is just a whale. And I've just removed the background here in GIMP. So now I have um, a transparent background, but you can use whatever you want. So what I'm gonna do, I know it's on my desktop. So in the texture paint settings here, we're gonna actually scroll down. We're in our active tools and workspace settings up here. And we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna go over here to this little drop down where you can see it says texture. You're gonna click on that and then you're gonna click new. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over here to your texture properties, click on that. And then over here you can see that texture is active here. So let's just go and go over here to the drop down and then go over here to where it says open, click on that. I know it's on my desktop, so I'm just gonna go on my desktop and grab it. Now, if that's selected, let's go back up to our active tool settings here and let's go down. And now we're gonna see here, we have that stencil here. And at the moment it's actually set as tiled with the mapping. So if we were to paint on this monkey now, you can see it's just tiling it everywhere. So what we can actually do is we can come here and change this to stencil. There's actually quite a few options. We're gonna go with stencil today. And then you're gonna see here in your scene, you have your picture popping up. So you can actually right click on it and move it around. And if you wanna move around in your scene, you can just hold in your middle mouse button as normal and you can move around, you can hold in shift, middle mouse button, you can still move around just as you normally do. But once this pops up, you can just right click on it to move it. And even cooler, if you hold in shift, you can scale it. So I'm holding in shift and right clicking to scale this image. And then if I want to rotate, I can hold in control and right mouse button and do this. That's just really, really handy. So now all I have to do is I have to move around, get to a position where I like it. I can right click and move my whale. And now I can just simply left click and paint it 
onto this texture. And if we come over here, we can now see here it is over on this side. How cool is that? So now we can go through here and we can scale, we can rotate and we can paint. And you can add in whatever, at any point you can come back to your texture here. You can change this out for any other image or texture that you're trying to paint. And this stenciling method is really handy. And I think it's just something that is a lot of people might not know about, but if they were to know about it, it would really change the workflow and it'd be very handy, especially when it comes to doing some nice texture painting. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I'm not gonna be adding this to Patreon because it's more of just an example. We're not really making a final product here today, but I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And if it's earned your subscription, I appreciate it. And if it's earned your like, really appreciate it as well. And I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial.